Hi and welcome to a brand new series of Fishing Western Australia. In Series 1 we covered a lot of WA, but now for Series 2 we've gone over 25,000 kilometres, north and south, east and west, and right now we're starting off in Marshy's hometown here of Broome. That's right Steve, I've moved to Broome now and I've been here about 12 months, absolutely loving it, but the fishing is absolutely awesome all over this state, not just here in Broome, we've got marlin, we've got coral trout, we've got you name it, we've done it this year, and we're bringing it to you with a lot more information. Exactly right, we've been to just about everywhere, Esperance, Albany, Coral Bay, the Montevallo Islands, the list goes on and on. Let's have a look at what's coming up in episode one. We kick off this series with Barramundi from a secret billabong. We show you how to catch black brim from Albany's Kelgan River and troll up one of the fastest fish on earth. But first, let's go fishing in Perth. Now I'm a Fremantle boy. I grew up right here and this is actually where I learned how to fish. Coburn Sound, it's a beautiful place and there's some great fishing action here. Throughout this series we're going to show you the most amazing fishing action but to start with I thought I'd bring you right back to the place where it all started for me. I'm going to show you how to catch King George Whiting from the rocks. Now it is actually possible, there's a few little tricks that you need to know. So let's have a look at how we're going to do it. You don't need to cast too far, so just look for some inshore sand patches around the weeds. KG swim along the edges of this weed, so just send it out and let the bait sit in the sand. Yep, got him. But silver, that's a good start. There you go. That's a lovely little King George Whiting. And they're perfectly formed at this size. I'm going to hold him away from the camera so he doesn't splash you just for a second. But they're so slippery. And there he is. Look at that. Now they're not legal size. This one here isn't anyway. He's about 20 centimetres. Legal size is 25 centimetres. I'll just pop that hook out of him. Now, the hook will come out like that. Give you a quick look. They're very slimy. We don't want to wipe that slime off, but there's a beautiful little Fremantle King George. And they're so pretty, so I'm going to pop him right back. He's undersized. Here we go, fella. Out there. The King George is found across the cooler areas of Australia. Juvenile fish live in the sea grasses and move to 25 or 35 metres of water at around a year old. Now when I'm fishing for King George Whiting from the shore or from a boat, I use the same rig and I tie it onto the main line that I'm using. Now that there is a little dropper loop, little surgeon's loop, and there's a second one down on the sinker. The second one is just there to hold the loop firmly in place. And the sinker I'm using here is a little ball, but it's an ideal rig because that dropper can easily be undone if I want to go lighter or heavier on the sinker. Straight off the dropper, we go up to our hook there. And because I'm fishing for the smaller whiting, I'll use a number eight chemically sharpened hook. This is a Gamakatsu octopus hook. If I go out in the boat, I'll probably use a shiner type hook, maybe a number two or a number four, because they can take a big bait. Now with the bait, I always cut it up. Now from the shore, I'll use a prawn bait. And we don't need the head, so I'll just get rid of that. And these braided lion scissors are ideal because you can cut it neatly into sections, and in a coral prawn of this size, probably three sections are ideal. Now we have to put it on the hook. Now putting it on the hook is simple. All you need to do is take your hook, get the prawn, slide it through, out the other side, through a bit of shell, and you bait it up and ready to go. Now King George are not only caught from shore, but they're actually caught in the deeper waters as well. Have a look at this fish that Marshy caught when we were in Esperance. See, pull up. Yeah, I think we need the net for this one. Oh, you'd be surprised, boys. It's not a bad fish, actually. It's a King George. It is. Oh, it's a what, a, what a King George! <laughs> Far out! You got him? Oh, my! Wow, that is a King George whiting. Oh, look at that. That is just unbelievable. Now look at all these kidney slappers, and I can see why. It's not just the length, it's the width. <laughs> That's the size of a small tree. That fish of marshes was enormous. So King George Whiting, you can catch them in the ocean, you can catch them here from the rocks. They're a fabulous fish, it's no wonder people love them. I'm so excited today. I've waited all my life to come here to the Kimberley, 
and today I'm with Marshy chasing Barra in a freshwater lake and I'm using that. It's a Rapala skitter pop and it creates a shower of water in front of it which the Barra really love. I'm going to put it on my bait caster, I'm going to flick it just into this lake here and hopefully a big Barra is going to grab it. This is the sort of place that you dream about fishing and it was only entrusted to Ian because he's now a local in the Kimberley. Marshy made me put on the blindfold as we walked the two kilometres to the secret billabong which is just as well because this looked remarkably like a place I'd seen Malcolm Douglas hunting crocs on the tally. Marshy and his friend Peter Tucker are experts around these waters and chose fly rods but I thought I'd stick to the spinning gear to give myself the best chance of landing a barra. You can see the spray that these poppers, especially the skitter pop, generate. They're called skitter pops because they skitter across the surface like a small bait fish would that's frightened. And a predator like the barra absolutely loves that sort of thing. It really gets me excited. It gets me excited too, I can tell you. When one of them comes up and has a go. You might want to slow down there a bit, Steve. You can work it in really close. No, I can hear tarpon jumping everywhere. I've never really done this before, so I'm working my lure a bit too fast, like I would for, say, Trevally. Barra like it really, really slow. So Marshy just told me to slow it down, and that way the barrel will sort of cruise up behind it, wait for it to pause, and then go for the lure. So I'm going to flick it out, not far. Too. Oh, it's gone around the reeds. Take no, time. Go back out. <laughs> take your time there, Steve. They will take you around the reeds. Looks Gee, like we're... a good fish too. Yeah, it does, isn't it? Hmm. You gonna land it for me? Yeah. That's what friends are for, eh? That's it. Oh, gee. How about getting in this water, though? It's the... <laughs> Actually, that's not bad, is it? That's a good fish, mate. Just keep them up. That's it. Now you've got to be really careful with these puppers. Yes, they are sharp, mate. Just be careful. I want to say I'm uh, pretty excited about this. What I'll do is just release that lure down gently because I'm going to just take that hook out before I pick him up. Just let go of the line. Yep. Okay. And we're just taking it out like that. Well, finish. Oh, hey, there you go. That's my biggest barra so far. And I'm a happy man, mate. Mate. They get bigger than that up here, but that's a beautiful specimen for a freshwater fish. I think you could swallow my arm. Here we go. Whoa! <laughs> I'm gonna go for a swim in a minute. Oh, there's no crocs in here, is there? No. Sharks yeah, at all the crocs. Now his fins are up, and that's a good sign that he's healthy. So let's see how he goes. Now that was a great fish there. Mm. And I'm joined by Peter Tucker from Levic Wilderness Fishing Charters. And he's up here in uh, all around the Kimberley and he's got a camp, and Pete, the barra here are sort of a golden colour, not the silver ones we get in the ocean there. Yeah, that's right. The uh, water here is um, obviously a tannin colour, and you'll find throughout the Kimberley, any freshwater uh, holes where you're fishing for barramundi, they're always that really dark bronze. Right. And that's, that's always due to the tannin, and the tannin often comes from the uh, Malaluka trees that, that frequent the water holes throughout the Kimberley. Okay. But you'll find that uh, once this barra, once these barra leave, this freshwater system and head out to sea, they'll eventually take on that really lovely silver sheen. Right. But a good indication of a barramundi is, uh, has just left the fresh, or he's not long left the fresh, is that they'll take on that silvery sheen, but they'll always have a dark tail. Oh, okay. And then eventually, uh, that tail will become quite yellow. Right. So if you uh, are travelling up and you do get barra with uh, the silver, nice silver sheen, but that darker tail, you'll know that he hasn't long left the, uh, the freshwater system. Steve, he absolutely hammered it and he's taken Whoa. it line. Jeez, I'm glad it's you and not me, mate. I don't think I'd have the skills to get this on a fly rod. Yeah, he's not a bad fish there, Pete. On the five weight, they really give you some stick too. Woo. Yes, I can certainly see that. He's a, uh, he's a nice little fish. He's Another not three or four yet. feet, mate, and I'll be able to get no, your leader. No, 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 no. Just wait till I uh, give you the go, Steve. Okay. You just want to be very cautious coming down to these waters edge here, Steve. You just never know where these crocodiles might be lurking. 
side now. He's come out. It's come out onto his lip. Yeah, this line so you can put your thumb in there now. You want me to have a go in there? Tight, yeah, tight as it, and grab him around the belly, mate. So oh. strong. That's it. Okay. So strong. Oh, and sharp too. All right. Grab that line up there. Right now, look at the size of the flies. <laughs> <laughs> They're looking for just anything to eat, aren't they? I don't care what it is. These flies are well in. There you go, just a little tiny, tiny popper compared to the size of his mouth. You could probably eat about 20 of them. And a beautiful fish. You'd hate to be on the receiving end of that, wouldn't you? <laughs> on the five weight, Steve. They are very, very good. That is beautiful. There's no more spectacular place to fish for black brim than the Kelgren River in Albany. It was a beautiful winter morning after some overnight rain, so he headed up to a local hotspot with some warm clothes and a packet of prawns. Okay, now we've pulled up in the snags that you can see behind us, and the reason we're doing this is because the brim don't live in the middle, they actually live along the banks, and they hide underneath rocks or logs, all that sort of stuff. Yeah, great structure for these type of fish, and we're in a great spot, so I think there's quite a few fish here. We're going to use some little river prawns That's that you can right. buy from any tackle shop. Just a little packet, you can have a great session on them. So let's do it, eh? Okay, yep, yeah, we're just going to lob our prawns right into the snags with a tiny bit of weight, or maybe even no weight at all. We'll see how we go. Okay. One of the secrets of brim fishing is presenting the bait in a natural way to the fish. Through the tail and just feed the prawn on. And with these uh, shiner hooks, they actually are designed for prawns. And you just feed them on like that. So it sits there and when the brim comes along, they always go for the head. They like the head first and they'll grab that. And hopefully, as soon as they touch that, um, it will scare them and they'll hook themselves. And just don't forget, just make a little tiny loop, just like that. I usually try and just put it over the uh, little sinker there, so it holds it together like that. And there you go. A beautifully presented bait for black brim. Oh, and I've got one going here. Oh, good. I've gone catch his mates. See? Did me. Oh, he had that well in his mouth. And why didn't you hook him then? It's not my day today at all, is it? <laughs> He's going for it now. Yeah. It's almost on. Yep. One. Got him. Look at that, you way. Oh, it doesn't feel very big. It's a stick! <laughs> <laughs> they fight really well. It looked far more impressive under the water. That was amazing. Do you know that stick actually took my bait and everything? Unreal. Even the sticks fight hard here. Okay. And the good thing about sticks is that they just keep them out of the water for quite a while. And they, uh, they go back really easily. I'll release this stick. Nice, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Great. My first stick. Oh, that's a good fish, Marsh. Yeah. He's gonna go around my line. No, no, he's gone over you, which is good, I think. I think we're sharing this one. Oh, good fish! I haven't seen him yet. Oh yeah, he's good. Oh, he's pretty hard. Go for those snags. Yeah. Get the net for you. Nah. Oh, not bad. Not bad. Alrighty. So, not bad at all, mate. Thanks for that. I'll just grab him. Gee, they're well conditioned here, aren't they, eh? They are too. And that's just an average fish. That's uh, nothing special for the Kelgan. A Beautiful. beauty. Okay, got him right in the side of the mouth there. This hook should just pop out. You like that prawn? I thought moving to these snags would be the go. There just seems to be a little bit more wood. A little bit more... Uh... <laughs> I caught wood earlier. Yeah, that's... <laughs> <laughs> Seriously though, the uh, sticks and logs in the area lining the banks now, these have all fallen in from the trees. And uh, if you can see so much cover on the surface, there's got to be stacks of cover underneath. So we've just nudged the boat up against a log, current's coming this way keeping us in place. And the first cast, he's made me look bad again. You must be the brim specialist in the team I reckon, Marshy. Go on.
watch yourself Steve because I'm going to strike in a minute he's just about to take it here we go hear me now always watching the line oh yeah I always watch my line, I never watch the sort of the rod tip. Because the line's a really good indicator, especially when it's this calm. You can just see him twitching it there. I think he might have took my bait then. No, no. He's still there. Here we go. Here we go. You're on. Got him. Good fish too. Right, we'll get that anyway. Yep, nice one. This snag, it's definitely got the fish, hasn't it? Now I'm getting my line right out of his way. Oh yeah, he's pulling, he's pulling. Now I'm only using four pound lines, so I've got to be really careful. Oh, he's a bit of a fighter. Yeah, actually, a good fish too. Not as big as the last one, but oh, still a close. good fish. All right, straight in the net, mate. When you're ready. Although they're not big fish, um, we're still netting them just to uh, make sure that we get them in. Okay, just bring his head up. Too easy. Beautiful. I'll just grab him. Well, there you go. Another beautiful brim. And look at those teeth. You can see they're quite predatorial. They're very sharp, those front teeth. Just pull the, uh, pull the lips back, and that's what they look like. You don't need a like wire fangs. leader or anything like that, do you? No, just like a little dog. Well, that's all the prawns gone, so time to move on, I think, and we'll go and explore some other parts of the river. Yeah, we've had a great time here in Albany on the Kelgren River. Yeah. Bit of brim fishing in one of the best brim rivers in Australia. It's great fun, isn't it? Quite privileged to be here, actually. So Indeed. let's move on and see what else we can find. Okay, I might have a go to lure up there a bit further. All right then. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah. Oh, definitely. Oh, she's come alive now. Yep, yep. Over here, I think. Okay. Now, while I'm playing this in, short strokes up and down to belly weight fish. Don't lift the rod high. Keep it nice and short stroke. Ian's gone and grabbed his cast bait because it's very possible this sailfish they're going to come up and have a look at the back of the boat. Now the teasers have stopped, Marshy, so... Do you want to move to the, my right? And I'll go over that way. Okay, mate. Just get it out there and see if anything comes up. It's coming at me. Probably 100 metres away. It's coming up now. Yeah. Now just watch your line there, mate. Yeah. Bring it up, I think. Yeah, that's it. Switch with you, eh? Yeah. There he is. Good fish, too. It's a wahoo. It's a wahoo, yeah. Nice one, too. About 15 or, I'd say. Oh, he's shaking his head. Woo! Look at that. What a beauty. Forward, please, Skip. We'll bring him around the back of the boat. Hang on, hang on. He's gone deep. There's one swimming with him. Someone get a dig in the water. There's one under him. Hang on, hang on, there's one with him, look. Yeah, got him. That's a shark, is it? Yeah. All right, we'll get him in then. There's another wahoo there. Yeah. Oh, that's a good hoo. He's a beauty. There was one with him too. That was a shark, mate. No, 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 there was another wahoo as well. Wow. Oh, wahoo, aren't they strong? That's an awesome fish. That lure will come right out there. Okay, Woo. these are one of the best sport fish in the ocean. Absolutely brilliant wahoo. I really love catching these things because of the speed and the raw power. And they're certainly not a Spanish mackerel, even though they look like it. So, after a quick photo from the crew, we're gonna pop him straight back. Turn it towards me, Steve. Take a picture, put him back, you'll feel great. Here we go. Wherever you are in WA, you can check us out on fishingwa.com for all articles, there's movies, up-to-date reports, where they're biding, 
and some secret hotspots too. So I'm going to have a fish in there. You check us out on fishingwa.com. On our next show, we travel deep into the Kimberley to try a new type of lure. Ian meets the Queen of Barramundi, and I'll teach you how to catch my favourite fish, the tailor. There you go. That was show one of series two. Absolutely awesome. We've got fish coming out of our ears this series, and we're going to bring a lot more to you as well. Exactly. You won't believe what you're going to see over the next few months. So thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time on Fishing Western Australia.